Welcome to Explorer Emergent. This is a new tutorial series on AVR and microcontrollers. And in this series, we'll be speaking about the 80 mega series of microcontrollers. So, Atmel has uh, you know various uh, lines of uh, AVR controllers, and in those we have a tiny controllers we have this is called the uh, mega series and this is x mega so uh, now the uh, tiny as you can see it is uh, very limited pins limited features and but still it's good in a uh, whole lot of things and the mega is one of the widely used uh, you know 8-bit uh, avr mcus and the X Mega, it has some higher features and functions like the USB, Ethernet, CAN, and all that stuff. Now, uh, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the Mega series of AVR microcontrollers, and to name a few of them would be 80 Mega 8, 80 Mega 16, 80 Mega 32, and you should have also heard the 80 Mega 328 which is used in the Arduino boards. Now, uh, in this tutorial, specifically, we we'll first look at the uh, block diagram as to what the controller uh, actually consists, and then we'll be sp speaking specifically about the at Mega 32 architecture. Now, uh, the architecture across all the series of microcontrollers is similar, but we'll be focusing on a specific chip so that we can understand it in detail. Okay, let us look at the block diagram of a generic AVR uh, MCU. So, so I'd be saying MCU for the microcontroller the microcontroller unit and what we have at the center of everything on a microcontroller is a ALU so this is an arithmetic and a logic unit and uh, we had done a complete tutorial on what exactly an ALU does and how it does the arithmetic and logical operations you could as well go through it so you have an uh, ALU here and then uh, you have and on all the basic uh, controllers that you get you have a set of registers so uh, these are you know the inputs or the outputs to the ALU these are temporary storage units uh, say which store a byte of data and it is used whenever ALU does all these arithmetic and logical operations. So on a AVR MCU as well you have a set of registers and so uh, we'll see in detail as to how many registers are there and how they work in the architecture now uh, so these are the resistors and apart from resistors there is a bigger chunk of memory which is again a temporary storage memory but it has uh, it is faster so and this is you know called the static ram or just the ram so you have uh, alu then you have a set of temporary resistors and then you also have a data memory which is called the RAM and remember that when the power goes off everything in the RAM uh, goes off so it's kind of non-permanent kind of storage now uh, whatever data that, that the program or the program generates it's all stored in the RAM for example whatever variables you define in the code those are stored in the RAM so we'll look at that in our first initial examples and apart from ram we do have a, a permanent storage uh, memory on the controller itself so this is called the eeprom so if you've not heard about it before it's called the electrically erasable and programmable read-only memory 
it's called read only uh, the convention goes like that but it does not mean it's just read only you can write your data on real time and read back from it now where is this eprom used and uh, we'll see it exactly how much we have on the controller we're speaking about but the important point here is it's a very little memory and it comes in very handy when you want to uh, save some real-time data say you want to read some sensors while the system is on and you want to keep those parameters logged in for a long long time or rather permanently in that case you'll be using an eprom now all the code that you write in either C, C++ or assembly that is stored, uh, you know, that is compiled and converted to a hex file and that hex file resides in one more memory that is called the flash and uh, so the flash is again a permanent memory but that is used only to store code. So what you could observe here is the flash that you have on the AVR MCUs it's larger than the RAM or EEPROM and apart from this uh, now this constitutes the uh, you know the, the the main unit along with the uh, storage elements apart from this for a controller to work in real time what we need is a few other things like say the input output ports without which a controller would be of not much help you know uh, whatever computations it would do would be confined to itself if it does not have an external interface so the IO ports these form the inputs and output uh, for the controller to interact with the real world now uh, if I mean if you heard about IO ports before uh, they would be basically up about two broad categories so these could be analog in nature that could read analog signals and then uh, they could also be digital so uh, by analog we mean uh, all the sensor inputs like say for instance your temperature or humidity or pressure or any analog value for that matter and uh, all these can be read as well so the controller has an ill built analog to digital converter which converts those values which are coming from the analog ports and you know you can process them and you can do a whole lot of stuff so and we also have digital pins on all of the uh, microcontrollers and these are also called as the GPIOs or the general purpose input outputs now apart from all this you know there's still some more features like the uh, timers so these come in handy when you want to uh, count time or you know even when you want to even count external events so this is timer slash counter now uh, you also have uh, various other uh, units inside like the watchdog timer it's kind of fail safe uh, device for the uh, for the controller so you have a watchdog as well now uh, what do you what else you have is uh, you have even comparators inbuilt onto the controller so these can be used to measure uh, two signals and determine which is greater or which is less to, uh, stuff accordingly so uh, you also have a comparator on the chip so now so we have all of this on an AVR microcontroller and what makes uh, the entire thing work is the oscillator so we should spend a little time here in describing what it is and how uh, it does what it does so you also have an oscillator now remember the oscillator could be uh, inbuilt onto the chip okay so uh, you have various options uh, so you can use the oscillator which is onto the chip on the chip itself or you could connect an external oscillator to the microcontroller now what oscillator basically does is it it, it provides a pulse to the microcontroller a continuous pulse say of about 
16 megahertz or if it is internal it could be between 1 to 8 megahertz if it is ex uh, six, I mean 16 uh, if it is external it could be between 16 to 20 megahertz so or it could be rather uh, from 8 megahertz to 20 megahertz so oscillator what it does is it provides continuous pulses to the controller and all the timing all the execution of the code all the fetching of the instructions from the flash and the uh, and the decoding of them and executing everything ha happens in synchronization with the oscillator so and and there are two things that that make controllers stand apart from all of the other uh, you know analog and digital uh, ICs that you see so and the first part is it is programmable so whatever flash memory that you see here it can be reprogrammed so what it basically means is it can be used in a wide variety of applications and it can be configured or programmed as you want and the second thing is it has a decent speed to do things in real time so uh, if you compare controllers of today the uh, the frequency uh, for about 16 to 20 megahertz is not that i mean that good but it's still good enough to be used in a whole lot of devices so when we come back we'll look at the architecture in detail and see as to what amount of all this we have on a AVR mega series controller thank you for watching